All right, so I came out to do the oil change on Shanna's Tahoe. Was not gonna film it because you guys know how to do oil change. But I figured I'd do a quick public service announcement. So I got a Mobile One oil filter. It's what I normally use. Picked it up at Walmart. I go to do the oil change. I've already drained the oil. And there's a SuperTech filter in the box. So apparently whoever was at Walmart wanted the more expensive Mobile One filter, but didn't want to pay for it. So they just swapped it with a cheap, cheaper filter. They could have at least been halfway nice and at least found the right cheap filter to put in there. So I at least have the right filter for the truck. But now I've got the wrong brand and the one that doesn't even fit. So now oil drained and I got to take the other vehicle, run to Walmart, see if they'll swap it even because I don't think I have the receipt anymore because I didn't know to check the box. But so... Word of warning, if you buy stuff at Walmart, check the box. So it's been one of those kind of weeks. I showed you guys yesterday that I went to do the oil change on this Tahoe and someone had swapped filters at Walmart. So instead of my mobile one, I had like a super tech. So I went back, swapped those out, came home, did the oil change. It's just a dang oil change, no big deal. Well then today, Shannon went to drive it and said the oil pressure was real high. It was like 60 to 80 the whole time and was never dropping. And when she was in the throttle, it was maxed out basically so trying to figure out what's going on i mean i've never had a bad oil filter before but i was like maybe it's that so it was in the 30s this morning i went and started it up let it idle for a while wanted to see it get to operating temp get up 200 210 and see what the pressure did it never got above 180 so i don't know if it's coincidental that the thermostat stuck open so that it's not getting warm enough to really start flowing well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a thermostat on. I happen to have one here anyway, cause we'd had some issues a couple months back and I went and bought a water pump and thermostat, had them ordered just in case I needed them. So I'm gonna put the thermostat on it and then get it up to temperature, see what happens. If the oil pressure still stays high, then I'm gonna go and throw a new filter on it and see if by chance it's something weird with that. And we'll go from there and I'll update you in a few. So where is it at? Right there. But, so I gotta take this hose off. Which will lose antifreeze? Yep. <laughs> Do you need something to catch it? Well, not really. I should. <laughs> Well, I don't want the dogs licking it. I'm clamping off the lower hose, so the radiator should hold. So it should just be the amount of what's right here. And are the dogs going to be out here licking the ground under your Tahoe? More than likely, no. So. I tell this clamp's never been off, or at least not for a really long time. And since we just put antifreeze in it, I don't really want to just trash it all. Yeah. So I'd have to go get something to collect it. Well, you've been aiming to replace this part. I mean, it's been in our yeah. barn. I mean, I, that's, I knew it was going to need it. That's why I bought it. I was like, yeah, I'll get around to it. Well, it's making you get around to it. Yeah. It's a funny way of doing that. Mm hmm was that minute when you think you're going to get a face full of antifreeze? Hopefully you don't get it in your eyes. That's, well, if there's anywhere it's going to go, it would be my eyes. <laughs> this car's lost so much Oh, we put a antifreeze. lot of antifreeze in the last couple of years. Yes, we have. Well, every plastic fitting is brittle now. That's why I figure I'll do this thermostat, and in two weeks, your lower radiator is going to blow out. Yep. How much are the radiator hoses? I don't know. i got to go get on the line and look. 
See, that's all the antifreeze we lost. Not bad. Will you lose more if you do the bottom antifreeze or but the bottom? If I take the lower hose, everything in the radiator comes out. So I'm saying since we just filled it, I would want to go get a container to catch all that so I could put it back in. Because if it doesn't cost that much, I've got that money I've made on Posh Park. We'll go look in a minute. Let me get the thermostat in. Then we can make decisions. Oh no. <laughs> well, nothing goes right. I've got a clamp for the hoses so you can clamp the lower radiator hose shut take that off and not lose everything out of the radiator elbow just bumped and it slipped up a little bit i'm <laughs> losing everything so i guess that made the decision easy head to AutoZone and get a lower radiator hose replace it while it's off i was supposed to be working on the truck today it's the last nice weather day before we get rain and cold so once again, every time I try to start working on the truck, something else breaks. So now I'll be doing this all day. Good news is I had the thermostat here already. I bought antifreeze for the truck, but now I'll probably be using that for this and then have to go get more antifreeze. Figures. And there she is. And new thermostats in. So now I just gotta run get that radiator hose and we'll get her back running. Well luckily they had all the parts in stock so throw a hose on real quick, fill it up with some antifreeze and then we'll see what it does. I'm still betting I'm gonna put another filter on it too because I'm betting it's coincidence that the thermostat went out at the same time. Because even at idle that pressure shouldn't have been as high as it is. So Maybe it was a fluke and there was something with the filter, but if so, I'm done buying anything for cars at Walmart. Just water. I know. <laughs> oh, we replaced one more hose, and it looks pretty. <sighs> yeah. That's what's important. <laughs> Unless you're doing it at home, not on the road in a sketchy area. <laughs> yep. Like last time. Progress. <laughs> You know if it's going in there. Well, it's going somewhere. It's not going on the ground. It's going right here. <laughs> Go start it. You gonna do the oil filter tomorrow then, or Saturday? Well, let's get this part first, then we'll discuss. test this and see what it'll do earlier it would do coke bare the temp gauge was barely going above where it's at right now it wasn't even quite making it to that next solid white line yeah. you can see the pressure is about 40 or actually probably closer to 50 so under RPM, it's still getting up close to 80, which it never did that before. 
So I'm betting I'm still gonna have to change the filter. We'll let this thing get up to operating temperature and make sure the thermostat's working though and then go from there. So we've been running a little bit now. Normally this gets the temperature pretty quick. It's still not getting past that point. And the pressure still climbing too high. So I'll go ahead and put an oil filter on it again. See if that by chance is a fluke issue and then we'll go from there. Yeah, lifting big tires would make this easier. Ow. So oil filters on, here goes nothing. not good well at this point it's time to either put an oil sending unit on it or consult Mitch I'll probably do the ladder first and then start spending money hopefully it's not to a point that I have to get it up on a lift to do anything I used my phone a friend and got somewhat of a path forward on this so there's a little plate above the oil filter that's known to leak so Mitch suggested replacing that with this little piece so you can put this on get that leak fixed and it adds a service port so I'm gonna hook a mechanical pressure gauge up to it and then I'll just run that outside fire up the engine and verify that the mechanical pressure is matching what the gauge says I'm hoping it's just a sending unit thing still, but not real hopeful. So I'm going to go down there, put this on, and then hook the gauge up, and we'll see what it does. So right here is where the plate with the service port is going to go. You can see she's leaking pretty good. And you can kind of see the new piece on there. For now, I just got a pipe plug in there. I'm going to get an aluminum pipe plug to put in a little bit. I will get the tester in it in a minute, and we'll check her out. And here goes nothing. under 60 at idle the gauge is reading 45 Well, it looks like at least the gauge is off by a good 15, 20 PSI. So that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a sending unit on it and see if that takes care of it. Hopefully that's all it was. I was getting worried I was gonna have to get an oil pump because there's, or a pickup tube, one or the other, but no way I was gonna be able to do that out here in the gravel to be able to drop the front differential and the, take the timing cover off, all that stuff you have to do for it. 
I just don't have the tools or the space. So hopefully this is all it is and we'll get that knocked out and see how it does. Well, it's been about a week and Shannon's been driving this all week with the pressure just reading a little high now that I know it's not a real problem. But I've been in Alabama all week working. Now I'm back, finally got the pressure switch. So I'm gonna go and put that on real quick and see what she does. Well, this thing is buried back here. <sighs> well, at least got the swivel on it. All right, new one's in. So now to fire it up and see if I can get a light in there to make sure it's not leaking. All right, well, this one's done. Like I said, she's been driving it. So it's not like it was a huge deal at this point. But now I feel better knowing the gauge is at least close to accurate. This thing still needs a lot of work. Unfortunately, I gotta get an axle seal done on the Jeep. And then I'd like to get the truck running first and then we'll circle back to this thing. But I need to get the starter on it. There's a bunch of little stuff inside it needs. But for now, hopefully this gets it going for a little while. Then of course, long term, as soon as I can get me a better tow vehicle for the camper, this thing will get a lot of stuff done to it. Then Shanna can kind of decide what she wants, which sounds like she wants it lifted, big tires, all that. So we'll get to that, but gotta get a better tow vehicle for the R-Pod first. So for now, wrap this one up and stay tuned for the future breakdowns. <laughs> 